So let's talk about centripetal force. So here's the question for you, which is saying, a person is held stationary in a rotating drum against the wall by the static friction exerted on him by the wall as shown below. Find the required coefficient of static friction between the man and the surface of the drum to keep him from slipping downward. The radius of the drum is 2.5 meters and it is rotating at 0.6 revolution per second. Okay? So now we have to understand something here. So we are saying that here is the drum. Okay? From the diagram here. So there is this person who is rotating. And we know that when something is rotating, more like it's moving around the circle, then there is a uh, centripetal force which is pointing toward the center. If there is centripetal force, then there is centripetal acceleration. Okay? So now what we have to understand is that I'm going to get this part here to say, this is the part which I'm going to get. So I'm going to put this person to say, that is the person. Now remember, this person is moving around the circle, inside the drum. So we know that if I have got the surface, then the object is here. The force perpendicular to the surface is the normal force. Okay? Now we can clearly see here that this is my surface here. Okay? This is the wall. Meaning that the force perpendicular to the wall is going to be the, the normal force. So I can say that that is going to be my normal force. But they are saying that for this object to move around the circle, meaning that there is friction force which is pointed upward for it to help not to go downward. So we have got the force pointing upward which is the friction force. Then again, we know that since it is this object is in free fall, okay, inside the, the drum, meaning that the downward force is going to be the mg. So now the net force in y direction is supposed to be zero for this object to move in x direction only. There is no motion in y direction. Therefore, we can say that the summation of all the forces in y direction will have got the, the friction force pointing upward. So this friction force, they are saying it is static friction. I can say Fs. That is just okay. Even here, I can say Fs. Static friction. Even here, I will say, then minus, since mg is pointing downward, it's going to have a negative. So the net force is zero. Fs will be equal to, it will be minus mg. So I can say that Fs is equal to mg. Let's leave it there. Okay. Now, what we have to know is that the friction force is mu times the normal force. Okay. So I'll leave it there. Then now I know that in x axis, this object is moving in x direction only. Therefore, the summation of all the forces in x direction. What force do we have? In this case, we can clearly see that we have got the normal force which is perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to say the only force which I have in x direction is the normal force. But since this object is moving in x direction, according to Newton's second law, we are going to have the mass times acceleration. Now in this case, since it is moving along the circle, it's going to be the centripetal acceleration. It's going to be equal to the normal force. Now what we have to remember here is that the centripetal acceleration is given by v squared divided by r. So I'm going to replace this with the uh, centripetal acceleration. So I'll have this divided by r is equal to the normal force. So this is my second equation. So now what I can do now here is um, I'm going to make, I'm going to replace, we have said that uh, the friction force is given by mu uh, s times uh, the normal force. I'm going to replace the friction force with uh, this. I'm talking about the first equation now. So I'm going to say 
the mu s times the normal force is equal to the mg okay now our goal is to find the the coefficient of static friction so what i'm going to do now is uh, i don't have the normal force so i can make the normal force as a subject of formula okay meaning that what it means there is that in the first equation here we have got the normal force to be equal to mv squared over r so where there is normal force i can replace the mv squared over r so i'm going to say mv squared over r times now the mu s is going to be equal to the mg okay i want to find the mu s okay now for you to understand this topic circular motion what you have to do is um, you can access our full videos now let me show you how you can access the full access full videos if you go on chrome then you search transcendent institute this is what you're going to see so you're going to see this then you just scroll down if you scroll down here you can see that we have um, you go where there is e-learning then you are going to to see this so we have got all the courses mathematics physics biology biochemistry and math 2110 and chemistry so if you want to access full videos for rotational motion this is what you are going to do you just click on physics so you can see that we have all the topics now you go on circular motion so on circular motion here i have this video here for which is the throw sheet it's 91 minutes which is about one hour 30 minutes yeah so this video has got all all the questions for circular motion then i also explained about the relationship between rotational motion and linear motion i also explained about the banking curve i also explained about the satellite I also explained about the banking curve with friction, the conical pendulum, the frequency period and rotational motion, centipetal force. Yeah, relationship between rotational motion. This is detailed now. Yeah, so you can access all these videos if you are going to register with us. Okay. Now, I can show you other videos on YouTube. I believe um, you know our channel. So I'll go on YouTube, then I'm going to go on um, uh, the Transcended Institute YouTube channel. Now I want to show you this. I want to show you this. If I go on videos there, there is this video. I can even give an example of, uh, okay, here. So if you can see this chemist video, which is uh, for um, chemical kinetics, as you can see from here, this video, the only one, the only video which you can watch is two hour, 52 minutes, but the full video is three hours, 33 minutes. Okay. So that is, if you want to register with us, you'll be able to access all those videos. Then we also have for biology, there's the past papers for biology, then the chemistry throw sheet. Then we also have for circular motion the past papers rotation work energy and momentum we have then we also have for free form motion these ones you can't you you can't access them you can only access them if you are a registered student now there's also this binomial so this video is three hours seven minutes but i believe you can watch the free vision which is just one hour okay now let's go back and finish our business now we are saying that we want to find the mu value we can clearly see that for us to find the mu value here i i have mass both side and i can cancel mass okay meaning that i now have this i now have v squared over r times mu s is equal to g we can cross multiply and see that v squared 
times mu s is going to be rg let's divide both sides by v squared even here by v squared so v squared and v squared will cancel we'll have our mu s to be equal to the rg divided by v squared now what we have to know now from here is um, from our question here we have been given the angular velocity okay so we are saying that the mu s will be equal to the rg divided by the v squared now i can find v or i can find the the v i know that the linear velocity is given by the angular velocity times the radius if i want what i can do is i can replace this if i want i can find v okay i can find v here and plug in there because i have the w here but again if i want i can just say the mu s will be equal to the rg divided by um the w r but this has to be squared okay now from here i can say the mu s will be equal to the rg divided by w squared r squared i can cancel one r so down part here will remain with one r so i have g is equal to w squared times r now this is going to be my my formula which i can use in this case now i have first to convert the r or the the angular velocity to revolution to large per second so i'm going to say 0 0.6 revolution per second in one revolution i have got 2 pi rad so the revolution and the revolution will cancel okay i'm going to have 0 0.6 times 2 pi which is going to be 3.77 lad per second now the answer is 3.7699 so i've just learned it off now from there i can now plug in the values i know that my angular velocity now is 3.77 okay let's go ahead and plug in the values we see the coefficient of kinetic friction or the coefficient of static friction which we are going to have so we are going to say that the mu s will be equal to g uh it's going to be equal to my g is a uh, 9.8 i'll divide this by the angular now is 3.77 but remember it is squared then the radius is 2.5 so my mu s will be um the down part is going to be 3.77 squared times 2.5 so i'll have 9.8 divided by 35.5325 so what would be my mu s in this case i can clearly say that my mu s will be 9.8 divided by 35.53225 so my static friction my coefficient of static friction is going to be this now i can round it off and say this is going to be like this so that is going to be my my friction my static friction in this case so that is it for for this question